I'm Prue Lee. And I'm Paul Hollywood, and we're here to answer your baking questions that you've sent in from Twitter. This is Baking Support. First up, Blue Starsky. I can't believe I didn't know about this. What are you looking for when you knock on the bread? Do you know? If you look at that, I'm not sure whether you're going to, I mean, it's a baguette, but if I get the bottom. Yeah, it sounds hollow. It's hollow. Hollow means it's got air inside. If it's got air inside, it's more open. If it's open, it's a good bread. Colleen, why is my pie crust always soggy? It's a crane, is it? What have you got? It's a proper American pie. You mean it's real? Oh, dear. <laughs> If you get a soggy crust, it comes down to the liquid that's inside. So you need to evaporate some of that liquid out or don't put as much liquid inside. If you've got apples, cook out your apples slightly to evaporate some of that liquid. So by the time you've got your topping on, it doesn't soak in the middle and end up with a, just a hideous, soggy milk. That's quite dense. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. Wow. Some, or you know another trick, if you're putting a wet mixture in like um, stewed apples or mm. plums or something, is if you put a bit of semolina, a thin layer of semolina or polenta in the bottom, it'll soak up some of the juices and it makes a tremendous difference. And also vent it, so vent your pastry so it allows that steam to He come means out make well. a hole in the top. Make a hole That's in the top, a vent. yeah. Do you think the Americans will know what venting is? Well, it could be hyperventing. Oh, that's true, yeah. Put a <laughs> hole in the top, I'm going to see it'll be fine. From Truly, croissant, how do they get so flaky? But it's all about lamination. So it's about chilling the dough and the butter each time you put, you do a fold. So you need to do turns of butter and dough and butter and dough. So you start off with basically a piece of dough, butter covering two thirds of it, fold that over so you end up with dough, butter, dough, butter, dough. You then put that in the fridge, chill down the butter again so it goes hard, roll that out, fold it again, and that's called a turn. You need to do that at least three times. Every time you fold it, it breaks the butter up, so it looks like a marble by the time you've finished it. And you need to roll it down to about five millimeters and then cut them into triangles, roll them up, and there you have a beautiful croissant. You know, I've got a croissant here, and let's have a look at this inside. That's yeah. nice and flaky. Yeah. And they, there there's you see the it. lamination. There's, there's the lamination in the flake. It means layers and layers. But the fact is, you need to read a recipe about how puff pastry is made, and then you will understand. Fake. My cookies are never gooey. They always go flat and hard and spread way too much on the tray. What's the secret? The mix is probably far, far too wet. If it's floating that much, you need a little bit more flour in there just to bring the mixture together. And a good little secret is, when you're doing cookies, make a little indent when it's on the tray and pop a little bit of chocolate in the middle and then just seal it up. But with that extra bit of chocolate on the inside, when you break it open, you the gooiness of the chocolate will just fall out and it's delicious. Okay. We've got a cookie here. I would say that's not a good cookie. I don't think it's a good yeah. cookie. And I'll tell you for why. It's bone dry. Mm -hmm. And I could tell that as soon as I lifted uh, this, it up. This one had the opposite problem of what uh, Faye is concerned about because it didn't, they didn't spread enough. That's awful, though, isn't it? It's so sad because I thought the most reliable American bake is a chocolate chip cookie. Mm. They're always delicious. That's terrible. And this one ain't. <laughs> Phrase, yeah? My caramel cheesecake burst and created cracks in the surface. What could have caused this? The mix is too dry. It's far too dry. The oven's too hot. Or if this is a cheesecake, you know, mm. if you take it out of a very hot oven into a cool kitchen, it'll often crack. If it's overdone, what you can do when you bring it out of the oven, rather than putting it on the side of the bench, place the whole thing on a cool surface like the floor. And what often happens is rather than collapsing in on itself, it'll naturally find its actual level and level off again. So rather than putting it on the side where there's heat rising from the floor, put it on the floor gently and then leave it to cool. Megasta sparkles. Yeah. What is parchment paper made out of? Silicon. Next question. So this is Robin. Can you fix a dough that has too much flour? Yes, you can. And if you've got a lump of dough that's quite stiff and you think, what have I done wrong? You've added too much flour by mistake. Add a little bit of water. If you add too much, it'll just mix and there'll be water all everywhere. A little bit of water at a time. Take your time mixing it. Take it and it goes to a sticky stage and then it begins to go inside. Once it go, goes inside again and it's cleared the bowl, a little bit more water and then stop the machine touch it and feel it so it's nice and soft. Yeah. So yes, you can. Aisha? Yeah. Why is my cake 
cratering in the middle. I used to be so good at makings. Sometimes when things are too hot, you, you scold the outside, and then as it begins to carry on baking, you bring it out or you're opening the door, the middle bit will collapse in. So it, it comes down to the temperature. Make sure you're attaining the right temperature. Chef Phil, what baking tool could you not live without? The Scotch scraper. For, mm. for me, yeah. it was always like my, it's the chef's knife. It's like a wooden handle or plastic handle with a blade, a rectangular metal just to scrape down a bench and cut up there and lift, lift up pastry. Bug, bug, tarot. Why is my cake so wrinkly? It looks like an elephant's foot. It comes down to the temperature. It looks like it's been blistered and it's a little bit too high in temperature, so drop the temperature and you'll be fine. Mia Nona. She says, please don't call me a monster, but what is the point of unsalted butter in baking unless you need to consume less sodium? Most of our recipes are actually unsalted butter because then you can control the amount of butter going in the recipe. If you put unsalted butter in, you're still controlling the amount of salt yeah, in that yeah. recipe. And that's the only reason, really. And you know what the trick is? Is to keep tasting it. I mean, I taste all raw mixtures, all doughs, all everything in the mixing state, because yeah. that's when you can tell how much salt there is. You're not a monster, you're a clever woman. M. Dizzy. The Great British Baking Show would be like, the babka is a bit stodgy, in it? And I pretend like I know what they mean. Uh -huh. Stodgy is something that's slightly gooey, but slightly stiff with a bit of glute, gluteless oh, yes. quality to yeah. it. Not good. From Dawn Bennett. Baking Twitter, I need your help. Blackened bananas, nay or yay for banana bread. Yes, absolutely, absolutely because the flavor is all there. And shall I tell you one amazing t trick with blackened bananas, is you cut the two ends off, just the tips, leaving the skin, liquidize it in yogurt uh, with a bit of cinnamon and a bit of sugar if you must. It is absolutely delicious. A bit of ice cream there makes it a smoothie. I bet that's not really nice. You'll find that your local grocers, if they've got some really black bananas, they'll probably end up really giving it to you virtually nothing. nothing because they're about to throw it away anyway. So go to your local grocer and if you go and see any, is there, what are you going to throw those out? I'll take it. And you end up with a very low costing banana bread. No. Hag yogi. I'm so confused how do cupcakes know when to stop rising? It depends on the amount of rising agent you yeah. put in. So there's a limit. So if you put lots and lots of bacon in it, it'll just pour and pour and pour. If you put a set amount in, which is the point in writing a recipe, then it will stop at a certain point and that's, that's, that's basically all it is. Yeah, you don't need to worry about, about the cupcakes. They'll worry <laughs> about when they'll stop rising. From Lefty Lucy, yeast is alive. Yes, it is. And if it's dead, it won't work. If it's dead, it won't work, yeah. Because what it's doing is breeding and, and giving off gas, which fills up the dough, and that makes the dough rise. Young Tax Evasion, that's a good name. How do you make the dough sour? Sourdough's been around for around four and a half thousand years. The ancient Egyptians invented it. You need to harness lactobacillus, which is the airborne bacteria, by mixing flour and water, leaving it to rise for a few days, throwing half out, feeding it with more water and flour, leaving it for a couple of days, it'll begin to bubble. Every day you need to throw a little bit away and feed it, feed it, feed it. So it takes Remember a week to make your starter. At least 10 days to two weeks to make a very solid starter. Once you've fed it after a couple of weeks, it should bubble within eight hours. That tells you you can use it. And you use that in your mixture of, with your flour and your salt um, instead of using the bacon, the yeast that you buy in the shops. This is from Muff Dog 7. Okay, our scones are supposed to be dry and hard. Why is anyone choosing to eat dry, hard pastries? The secret with a good scone is not to overbake it. So you want plenty of liquid. It's quite a wet mixture. <laughs> and once you cut it and you put it in the oven, you glaze a little bit of egg on the top. You bake it. I normally bake it at 200 or 400 for around well, not around, exactly 15 minutes, and you'll be spot on every time. This is Trisha, because we can't say your handle. What is the difference between baking powder and baking soda? Well, baking powder has baking soda in it, uh, but it also has packing agents in there as well. So a baking soda will react with an acid and alkaline to create bubbles, carbon dioxide, which will create the growth. If any moisture gets into baking powder, it's sort of protected, whereas baking soda, it's extreme, it'll just react and away it goes, so baking powder is the way forward. This is from Nicola. When making cupcakes, can you substitute oil for melted butter? The thing is with cupcakes, you can use butter or oil. Oil will give you more of a glisten and a shine and a, and a softness to your cupcakes, but there's no reason why you couldn't, no, not at all. Um, and play with the oil types as well. You know, use a flavored oil to give something a little bit more of a kick. 
Gaudacris? Gaudacris. Gaudacris. Why is it so hard to find comprehensive, thorough directions on how to whip eggs to stiff peaks on the internet? Just don't add your sugar until right at the end. You get your stiff peaks, and then start adding your sugar slowly, and you'll end up with a beautiful meringue. Sherry Silva, what are some common mistakes you make when baking, and what trips you up every time you bake? My most common mistake is I forget the damn things in the oven and you burn, burn it. it. I, th I think one of the biggest mistakes people make in the tent as well is they forget some ingredients. So if you've got your recipe book in front of you, just go through each one. We either put something underneath it and take each line and weigh it up and double check and put it in the mixer as you go. Then you know you're not going to miss something out of the recipe. Missing something out of the recipe is a very, very common mistake. Yes, it is. <laughs> Let's just say Matthew McGuckin. Yeah. I think that works. What does proofing dough even mean? Dave? Proofing dough basically means putting air in bread, leaving it to rise, letting the yeast do its work. From Van Wieser. Every time I try to make dough, it cooks out too dense. What am I doing wrong? Well, first of all, cooks, wrong word. Bakes is the answer. With baking, if it's too dense, you've either A, not got enough water in there so the dough itself was too dense before you even proofed it, or B, your chances are you haven't proved it long enough. And it's a good indication to tell you that the yeast is in its full expanse. Mostly it's got a double in volume, hasn't it? Yeah, it, it will bounce back and you know when it's going in the oven because you touch it, it springs back. And then don't undercook it because... It Bake it. Oh, Prue, <laughs> you're letting me down. <laughs> don't underbake it because if it you do, the middle will be a bit soggy anyway and then yeah. when it gets cold, that'll get dense is put it in a tin. So there's only one way for that dough to, to go and it's straight up and then it opens up the, the texture inside the loaf and then you bake it, it's dead easy. Yes, Ted Roth. Hand mixer versus stand mixer. Which is a better option? Hand mixers are really better for tiny quantities. Yeah. If you can afford it, buy a good stand mixer. Either way, but to be honest, a stand mixer is more versatile for what you need. Wreck it Raven. What's the secret to good buttercream? Why can't I ever make it right? Just mix it properly, use, um, I think you call it confectioner's sugar over here. Mm, yeah. With butter, done. Put a bit of colour or flavour in there with a bit of lemon zest. Well, that's all the questions. Hope you enjoyed it. We did. Yeah. And if you've got any more questions, send them through and we'll answer them in the very near future. Bye-bye.